So now let's implement the doc product into the slender version of our MPC script so we can get that functionality happening and then start changing the states based on whether it's on screen or not. I could almost copy that function even over. Let's clean this up first. So we have a Boolean variable to see if we are using slender or not. I'm going to do the same check down in the update because you see an update we're just going to make some decisions so I'm going to leave that alone and I'm going to create a whole new function just based on if this is slender or not so if we are using this script as our slender MPC Ah, I really botched that up. Okay. So if uh, what? Okay, something crazy just happened there. You all saw it. Okay, that's what happens when you collapse your things sometimes. All right. So if we're slender, we're gonna do something else. else we're going to be making our old decisions. Let's just even move that function right out of the way. I'll throw it after the update, but it's still out of the way. So, this script is for Slender. We're going to do something. If not, we're going to use our old decisions. So, what about a function for Slender? So, going to be our slender decisions. So if this is slender, we're going to be using all our conditional checks up here. If it's not, we're going to fall back and use all our old script stuff. Okay, so let's build this out. So, what I have a couple of variables first. Uh, so I had a variable is visible. This is a boolean. And by default we set it to false. Okay. Now our is visible will be toggled based on the return of our dot product. Now so what does our dot product mean? Uh, we had our off screen dot white float and I just give it a rough 0.8. So if our dot product is less than 0.8, so that's 0.7, 0.79, 0.72, it's visible, it's going to be false. If it's 0.81, 0.91 is visible, it's going to become true. So, let's create a function to do exactly what we were doing here in our example. So, we're going to check if visible. Better create a function for that. There we are, we're going to check if visible. And what does our check if visible do? Well, pretty much exactly what we were doing here. So, I am literally going to copy this out. You saw me build it. Now this time we don't have a variable for dot product, so let's just turn this into a local variable. And then we have it all fixed up. So we've calculated our dot product. Now we want to compare our dot product to our off screen dot. If L So if our dot product is greater than our off screen dot, so it's greater than 0 0.8, 0 0.9, it's visible equals true. And the other side of the coin is false. 
Now even just looking at this, I could even clean this up a little bit better. So let's just take that. Let's get rid of the else. Let's just set is visible to false by default. So we fall in to check is visible. We're going to say no, initially you're not visible. But if our dot product is greater than our off screen, we're going to set it to true. Okay, just a little bit of optimization right there. So immediately, we go into our update. If we're slender, we're checking our decisions. First thing we do is we check if we're visible. Now we know if we're visible or not. So we can make some slender decisions. So, if we are visible, what did we do before we chase? We have to do all our range checks, aren't we? Uh, okay. hmm. I think it would be better to put the slender stuff straight into this one. Thinking, thinking. Hmm. Now, I'm going to start again. I'm going to keep it separate just so you can see how the two different functions work after you've typed this up and read it back through on your own. If we're visible, what are we going to do next? We're going to check uh, range. So, if okay. Now for our slender, as soon as it gets further away than our minimum range, we're setting it to follow anyway. That was the same again if I reference down here. If we're a chasing enemy, we were chasing here, we were chasing here, and it was only if we were less than our minimum range that we didn't chase. Okay, so we can just pop all that in. So, if... Ah... Uh, We better get our distance first, okay? So we're going to be using this because that's a local variable. Okay, so before we check our range, we need to have something to check it against. So we get our square distance. Okay, now we can check. If our square distance is less than our minimum square range, Then we don't want him to move, we want him to stop and look at us, because he's already close enough. And when I included the other functionality of getting closer after each paper, that's also going to stop him further back and then stop him as he gets closer in. Okay, so squares, then we go to my state, equals uh, NPC state of idle. Yes. Else, okay, so if we are visible, we're checking our range. Oh dear me, this is what you get for not preparing. I've totally stuffed this up. Alright, what the last minute and a half from your brain? Now, we're going to check if he is visible. If he is visible, he could be out a hundred meters away from the player. So he could still be visible, but essentially not visible. Because he's so far away. So if he's so far away... He's going to be further away than our maximum square range. So if he's past our maximum square range, we're going to set him to chase him. 
And that's it, because I'm working on the wrong side. We want him to do everything if he's not visible. Okay, so if he's visible, we check where he is. If he's further away than our maximum range, we're going to ignore that. We're going to say he's so far away we can't see him. So we're going to let him still do his running around thing. So he could walk right up to us in front of us until he reaches this maximum square range. Alright, that looks like it's working. So, if he's not visible, let's fall down into that. Because that's what I think I was thinking about. Now we're going to be using this too, so we can even move this back out of here. So we're going to be using it in both parts of our conditional. So if he's not visible, let's just make it clear to me. Then we're going to be doing our minimum distance check. So, yeah, let's just type it in. If our square distance we just calculated is greater than our minimum distance. Okay, so he hasn't come close enough yet. So if he's not close enough, we're still going to set him to chase him. Else, he is close, he's too close. So we're going to stop him from moving. So currently our idle stops the NPC from moving. Alright, do I need to recap? Okay, so we check if visible, so we populate this variable. Then we get a distance between us and the target. Okay, alright, backtracking again once more. Check if visible. We're actually checking if visible from the perspective of the NPC. This should be on the player, because we want to see it from the player's perspective. But because, as you can see, uh, if the player can see the enemy, then the enemy actions is all driven by that. So that's why we've got it on the enemy script. So we've got to chop this around a bit. So, the forward is the target forward. So the forward will be our player forward. Just like in the example. So the other direction would be the NPC position minus the target position. Okay, so nothing else has changed there. This is actually fixing this. Okay, we're working from the perspective of the player. So from the player's forward, we get our direction and we calculate our dot product. And if the player can see the enemy, his visible is true. Alright, so that's just fixing that. So then we fall into this correct. Check if visible. From the player's perspective, are we visible? If we are visible, oh, we do need to put an else in here. So pretty much exactly the same as up there, but it's all based on the range, the maximum and the minimum. So if we are visible and we're outside the maximum range, we continue chase. Else we're inside our maximum range and he's looking at us, so let's just stop moving. And this is where we would decrease the health of the player. So let's just pop even a note in that because I'm losing myself already doing this on the fly. Okay, else we are not visible, so we check our minimum range. Has he gotten too close to us? No? Well, let's just keep him moving. And if he is too close, well, he's close enough, so let's just leave him to idle. So while he's idle, let's get him to do what he's going to do. He's going to actually face us and look at us. So we've set the velocity to zero here. So I'm going to say, my transform uh, Let's check the API. We're going to look at dot look at Transform dot look at. Okay, yeah, dot look at. Okay, perfect example target. So okay, so my transform look at target. So while the enemy is idle, 
he's going to stop and he's going to look directly at the target. No more rotations or things involved. He's just going to look directly at you. Alright, I think that's a whole heap of changes and I haven't checked anything in a while. So we save that script. Go back to Unity. Check for compilation errors. Go back to our prototype scene. 